what's what's the biggest misconception that younger people have about growing up and becoming an adult? Oh, that's a good question. I, I don't know. <laughs> There's a, every now and then I have to say, I don't know. What is the biggest misperception? You you probably can answer that. Well, I'll, you know, I'll tell you what other people have told me. They've said that they have their shit together. That's I've heard that one maybe like three times. That that, that adults all have their shit together? That's yes. what young people think? Yeah, okay, that's, that's a mistaken belief. Um, hmm. Yeah, like I said, this workshop this weekend, you know, I had guys in their 40s and 50s that, you know, the 21-year-old probably had his shit together better than, than the 50-year-old. You know, I think one mistaken thing that, that I've seen in the younger gen- generation, kind of well, younger's generation, yeah, you know, since I was a kid, when I was in the younger generation wearing bell bottoms and peace signs and flowered shirts and my hair was long and I had a beard, you know, they, people were talking about that younger generation, right? Now that I'm 68, I'm talking about the other younger generations. I think one of them goes back to the thing I was talking about is I think a lot of, of young people think I will grow up and have all the wealth and security that my parents have without having to go through all the sacrifice and work and struggle it took for them to have it. It should come easy because, you know, most of the younger generation, you know, if they grew up at least, you know, same Western culture in, you know, middle class environment. Everything has come easy. Everything's available to them, you know, on the internet. Uh, just everything come comes pretty easy to them, and and you know because their parents have taken good care of them and they have a car at sixteen and they have the best you know iPhones and all that. They think that's how life works, and um, I don't know. Maybe it will work that way for uh, what? What do we call the youngest generation? Is it Y? So y? I'm I'm uh, I'm Z. You're Z. You're Z. Yes. Okay. So, you know, maybe maybe Generation Z will figure out how to make all this work. And, and, and you know, I don't know. I, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty inventive in a lot of ways. Um, but as I said, this, the, the key piece that seems to be missing is that, that, that mentorship, that initiation, especially with men, that, that says, here's what it takes to rise above. And so... I'm optimistic that I, I actually think we're moving to a good place because I see more and more men being drawn into programs for men and even things like, you know, martial arts, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, things that challenge them and they get to be around men while they're being challenged. So I see a lot of good things happening, uh, even though I think we swung from one extreme to another extreme of, you know, everything Everything, you know, men, men had all the privilege to so now men are all worthless. You know, they're all toxic. I, I, I don't think we're going to swing back to that middle ground, but I do think we'll rise up above where men are becoming more conscious, more open hearted, um, more effective leaders. I, I, I really think that, you know, men in your generation have so many resources that men in my generation didn't have. And I'm optimistic about that, actually. I am too. I am too. Um, what do you think are some of the most important skills that men should master in life in general? Uh, business, women, uh, just being a father, maybe. What are the biggest skills that can help well, you us? Know, you uh, have to have a kid right? first, but you know, maybe, yeah. maybe master a few others before you become dad. But sometimes you don't get a choice. Um, you know, where where I would start is that uh, just before this call, I, I had a, a, a call with a, a man who was talking about perhaps he's going to work with me in consultation uh, as, a, as a client. And um, he's from the Middle East uh, originally and li- lives in Dubai. And he's in his 40s. And um, he talked about relationship issues. He's been married, but he talked about his attachment issues. And I said, um, do you have a posse of men in your life? Do you have good men in your life? And he goes... None. Absolutely none. And I said, I, I think a foundation for you having good relationships with women, to take the pressure off of the will of women to fill you up and complete you, you need good relationships with men. So I would start with any man of any age and say, build a tribe. You know, get, get your posse together. Get your crew of men together. Um, and kind of going back to what's the feminine attracted to. Notice that, you know, women tend to be attracted to to masterful men in groups 
you know, rock stars, you know, guys, just guys in the band, even if they're not stars yet. Uh, athletes, you know, guys that play team sports. You know, most women are, I don't mean to be just, this isn't a judgment, but most women don't flock to like, you know, professional Frisbee, you know, pros. But they do flock to the guys that play on a team and have to, you know, uh, succeed as a team. Because that's what our ancestors did. They they went out as a team and hunted and gathered and brought the food and the furs back to the women and then fucked them well and went out and did it again. So that's in the DNA for, for women to be attracted to a guy who's got a posse. Um, quick story. This, is, this has been 15 plus years ago. I, I went to a speed dating and um, came away not really getting anything out of the speed dating. But I, I, I was talking to a guy that I knew there. He knew a couple guys who knew a couple guys. So after the speed dating, we all went out together, five guys, and just had a drink at a bar and talked. And we said, we should do this regularly. So we, for a while, we got together about once a month and just went out and hung out, just guys being with guys. And I remember one experience. We were sitting in a bar in Belltown in Seattle. Uh, it was a summer afternoon, maybe about 5, 6 o'clock, still sunny light out. The doors and windows to the bar were open, so, and there was seating area outside. So people coming in and out. Us five guys, I was the youngest, and I was probably about 50 at the time. And we're sitting at this round table just having a conversation. And the women, young women going in and out. We're about to get up and leave, and the waitress came over with a tray of kamikaze. We said, what are these? The woman said, oh, there's a tray of kamikaze. And we go, why? And, and she said, the women at the bar, they were all about 10 feet away. They were all 22 at best, 22 years old at best. I, I was the youngest of my group at 50. They sent us kamikazes. And we weren't flirting with them. We hadn't talked to them. We weren't paying attention to them. And so I, I waited for the young women to come over. I said, well, why'd you send us drinks? And the women said, you just guys look like you're having such a good time. We wanted to come be a part of that. So master the skill sets of connecting with men. I'd say start with that. I think business opportunities grow from there. Pearl Jam opportunities grow from there. Opportunities with women grow from there. Women, women will see that. And women will... See that if you're a guy, well, when I got divorced in my late 40s, I really worked at being a social animal where any environment I went into, I wasn't trying to make anything happen, wasn't trying to show up, but I could, I was comfortable. I could talk to people and I could connect with people. And many, many women told me, you know, they'd see me walk in the room and think, who is that guy? You know, people know him, people talk to him, you know, he's comfortable. And so I think, again, and that comes from, I believe, Connecting with men and connecting with your own masculinity and, and learning how to like yourself. My last question is, if you had a minute with your younger self, what would you tell him? I saw in some of your uh, interviews, you, you asked a question like that. So I, I thought, well, I won't give it a lot of thought. So I, I thought, yeah, you know, if I had a minute with my younger self, I'd say pretty much what I've been talking with you about. I would go connect with men. I'd make that a priority. I would travel. I would do things that um, that scared me. Like I, I might go learn how to do martial arts. I might do the things that that I just avoided because you know I, I didn't. I didn't. They were the unknown. And honestly, even though I've been married three times, and I and you know, there's a part of me that likes being in a relationship. I think I would have told my younger self, spend less time with women. Spend it with men. Get out there. Put a big dent in the universe. You'll attract plenty of women. You don't have to go searching for them. You don't have to give up your life for them. You don't have to, you know, give up anything to have them in your life. So I think I would tell myself, go focus on connecting with men, living life on my terms, getting out of my comfort zone. Oh, I'd say go find a mentor. I, 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 I had very few mentors growing up. Go find a mentor. Somebody that, that can take you beyond where you can take yourself. So that's, that's, those are some of the things I'd tell the younger me.